Welcome to Urban Legend with your hosts, Mark Wash, Leo and Chris, and Mark. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Urbane Legend, the British-based international podcast uh, nosing around in the world of the strange and unusual. I am recent ornithologist Chris Flynn, and with me, as always, is half man, half spider, it's Neil Herbert. Hi Neil, how's your week been? Yeah, yeah, good. Yeah? Good, good. Yeah, catch any flies? <laughs> In my web. Yeah, In your yeah. web. Sticky, your web. sticky web. Um, so, uh, were, you, were you born this way? Or was it um, some kind of experiment? Some horrific experiment gone wrong. Yeah, what was it? I, I have no memory of the period before I was a half spider, Chris, so I don't know. Oh, really? I mean, you wouldn't have thought any human woman could birth this monstrosity, but... I wouldn't have thought so. No, I, I assume, you know, medical well, science gone rogue. But I would have thought maybe it was like a repurposed septic tank or something that you were uh, gestated in. Yeah, or maybe like I sort of dipped my feet into a, um, what is it, a toxic waste was all the rage in the 80s, wasn't it? Toxic waste, toxic was crusaders. Yeah. You yeah, know, people just dumped it anyway. A spider walked in the it waste. as well. And then we got few, could have been, you, could were, have, you were standing there doing your normal thing of eating a packet of spiders and you walked yeah. into some toxic waste. waste. <laughs> or maybe I went into like a particle accelerator and a spider crawled in as well and we fused together like in the fly. Yeah, or maybe maybe mm-hmm. a radioactive spider bit you like John Spiderman. Yeah, John Spiderman. That's that classic tale. Classic tale. So um, what, yeah. have you found it difficult living within the human society? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, um, the immense amount of painkillers I have to take. <laughs> the, the adjustment's been difficult, you could say. But you get, you get it on the NHS though, don't you? Well, yeah, fortunately, yeah. yeah. I can't work in my condition. I'm just in, well, in constant pain and screaming 20 hours of the day. But you're very quick at typing because of your extra, um, extra yeah, I mean, extremities. Yeah, a bit of extra money out of piecework, yeah. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah. documents. Two P a word, something like that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and how um, do you find that you have um, any sort of communication with spiders? Can you talk to them? Because you can speak human fairly well. Oh yeah, I can I can build a spider army and make them come and do my bidding if I want. Unfortunately, all the spiders in England are really small and non-venomous, so it's yeah, not much it's use. Not, it's not really. But like, it's not like I go down the Amazon or something. Yeah, you know, I, I can you know maybe annoy someone with it. But uh... have you found that uh, right-wing politicians have been at your door because um, they don't believe that half? Men half spiders should get the same benefits as full men or full spiders. Well, I did, I did, I did, um, I did go through that Atos um, medical, and they did actually, you know, they claimed, claimed I was fit to work. So, uh, even though you've got tiny so spider's that, legs on a human body, yeah. How, how on earth is this? Mm. Like DWP were convinced it was. If you uh, want a half man, half spider as a neighbour, vote Labour. That's what the Conservatives say, isn't it? <laughs> That's what uh, I always say. Um, so, very, I mean, it's a very niche political position, Chris. Not many of us. Well, it's it's ideological, that isn't it? That Tory really? boy who lives near to me didn't, didn't, I don't think he won many votes out of it, but yeah. no, not well, not down here. Quite a, but quite a right wing neighbourhood here. If it had been in Northampton, he would That's have probably true. been mayor. He would, yeah. Um, might have made him king. Might make king of Northampton. Yeah. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? Well, I think, like, do you know what? If we're going to have rules, I think we need to start having sort of like more civil wars and stuff. Local rules, like baronets. Yeah. What was the last one? War of the Roses? Yeah, ages ago. How do we know that... we've got a decent one in now? Well, we don't Contra- do that. Really. Let's, let's see how you, how, you, how you fancy. You get a pin load of medals to your chest. Let's see how you go <laughs> with a bit of sword or gunplay against yeah. them. Other let's get them into tenders. some white, white collar boxing. Yeah. Although, to be fair, because of his hands, I would imagine... Yeah, let's see what you do in a ring with Tyson Fury. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let's the king see, of, see if God saves you there. He's, he's king of the gypsies, isn't he, apparently? Yeah. That's what he calls himself. So, king of gypsies yeah. versus king of England. That would be yeah. good. He's I mean, supposed I'm, to do the talking, Chris. Yeah. I'll tell you who wouldn't like it, because Tyson Fury would definitely win. That guy who wrote about the Philadelphia experiment who hated gypsies. 
Oh yeah. Well, don't we, <laughs> it's, we don't know that he hated them. It's just weirdly he he had three characters who kept referring to each other each as, other with, as, as gypsies. gypsies. It, it was just really it was incongruous, if anything. But um, <laughs> now whether that 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 sort of like unveiled some deep seated. I mean, he might he might have been a great admirer of gypsies. You don't know. I mean, yeah. I don't know. Is it, I'm just I'm trying to think as well as gypsy, even a sort of. Can you use that phrase these days, or is it traveller? Sort of, yeah. Is traveller the correct term? I don't know. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, isn't it? It's it's a, is it regarded as a purgative now? I don't know. And for Irish travellers, it is, I think, yeah. um, but I think for Romany, it's so, not. Yeah, the Romany peoples, I don't know whether or not, it's, but I think. Because they're not be. actually, they're not from the same, they're not from no, the no, same they're, route they're, they're, things, yeah. they're completely different things. Yeah, the, the Romany, I believe, from India originally. Mm. A sort of, um, uh, what do we call it, the sort of nomadic people. Romany yeah. all round. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. We saw a lot of them when we were in when we were island hopping in Greece, didn't we? Yes, yeah, yeah. They get about, but um, they do get about. Yeah, well, didn't have any horses on the ferries, unfortunately. No. I did Greek listen to music. Lure unto themselves. Did listen to music really loud when we were trying to sleep on the floor. <laughs> I, I mean, that whole. I think that's the whole thing with a, with a the ferry. I think unless you, well, I don't. I don't even know. I don't remember seeing an option that you could get a room for the night, but. Um, they well, were we were very much to get not ferry, set up for you we? to get some kit. No. Because if you go, you know, you go in like a, an overnight ferry, even the ones where you don't get a cabin, like say over to Spain or something like that, like nobody's adverse to you. They know like three o'clock in the morning, you're going to sort of sit down on Be the, the beach, casino. You know? Not the casino, no, but in, um, you know, there'll be areas where you could go, you know, like the seating, you could, you, could, yeah. you know, they don't put on like loud TV and stuff like that. But it, I very much felt like, I think we only did one overnight one in Greece. But I can't did remember. Too. We did two, yeah. yeah. But it very much felt like they were set up there. There was nowhere we could go and get Because I can't, because I struggled to sleep anywhere but my bed. Like, I was awake for about 48 hours during that journey, including the trip to Simi. Oh, no, that's no, we from, it was from the, Simi to. No, it was Simi Eros. to wherever they did a cheese pie and have a monastery. Yeah, St. John's. St. John's, yeah. Yeah. I think that's Siros, isn't it? I don't know. I can't I think, remember now. No, we, we ended up in Syros. It was the one in between, I believe. Mm. I can't remember. It might be Pethos. I can't. Anyway, it's where uh, John the Baptist, yep. not John the Baptist, where John the Revelator had the visions, and yeah. we tried to find his cave on the way to the monastery, and literally mistook it for a public toilet on the way back there. <laughs> I now realise that what I thought was a public toilet was in fact where, where the Bible could, was written. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just the just the end bit, just where where he goes crazy and has a load of visions about. Um, the devil and uh, Atmos, Core of Babylon, and all that. Atmos, that's it. That's it. Atmos and its famous cheese pies. They were nice, yeah. though. Those cheese pies. Mm. No, they were. They were good. I love the Greek nice cheese pie. There's a place up near where I used to live on Seven Dials. There's a Greek cafe slash bakery there, and you can get cheese pies there. I oh, used to just, just like go and get them sometimes because it was around the corner. Yeah, I've seen that place. I've actually it's lovely. It's Greek, absolutely Greek great. delicatessen or something. Yeah, cool, something like that. yeah, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah, well, I was reading something in the paper the other day, actually. It was so spiders like Greek food? Yeah, well, it turns out. Turns out. I'm a fan of um, most ancient cultures. Salty cheeses. Oh, salty cheeses, yeah, nice bit of feta in it. Mm. 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 <laughs> That's something for the webbing, apparently. Yeah, it's good. I mean, that is the one, the one comfort I do have. I can spin out a web and just sort, of, just sort of rest in it. That's the only respite I get from the... Uh, but it's handy, isn't it? It's like being able to produce a hammock out of your ass. Yes. I mean, I'll be honest with you, it doesn't go well on office days. Apparently, no, I do have work. I you have got work, yeah. yeah. You just found out. <laughs> you completely ruined the continuity of this whole bit. Let's face it, it's bollocks anyway. But yes, it went great. <laughs> it Ironically, it didn't have legs. <laughs> oh, God, that's the worst thing you've ever done. Right. So, would you like to hear about my recent forays into ornithology? Yeah. So, well, so you, so you, you so I'm intrigued by the phrase "recent ornithologist," Chris, mm. because that implies that you are no longer an ornithologist. No, it implies that I've recently, or you've only just, or, or I've only, you've just, only got just gotten into, into ornithology. I've only just got into twitching, which is twitching. another word. Okay. For it. I would have thought with your deep, deep love of Bill Oddie, you would have been, uh, you know, yeah, but that's and more, and, and using that's more various. Of a kink. Binoculars and monoculars and other yeah, I mean, but passing they're, they're, devices hiding in caverns. Yeah, they're, they're, but that, that's but for um, reasons. That, that's, for, that's for different reasons. Yeah, okay, well, let's not get into that. that it's hobby. to check out to make sure that my enemies doth them to approach. 
Oh, okay. Wink, wink. Then we're coming from any direction. We're coming from any direction. You know, the, the swimming pool. <laughs> uh, yeah, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, so I've got into got into twitching. I'm really enjoying it so far. I've not I've not left my flat, obviously. No, no. Um, but I've seen all the birds so far. I've seen the majestic pigeon. Oh, you've nice seen pigeons. One. It's a nice. One, they're they're hard to to root out, aren't they? Well, there's a tree outside. Because normally I think of pigeons eating, I don't know, sandwiches, anything, KFC, Max, and that. Yeah. But there's a tree outside mine which kind of has these little flower buds on it, and the pigeons, loads of them, come in and just sit there and have an, and eat all the buds. It's like actually seeing them in nature rather than sort Steve of living in food. Just eat yeah. food, yeah, what, watching wrestling. Yeah. Um, I've seen seagulls, the majestic seagull. Oh, again, Lord a very, the, very rare one that's a spy. Lord right, of the land and it. sea. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so I've seen them um, flying about on the thermals, I believe it's called. Nicking anyone's chips? Uh, not from my Generally window. Been I, a I can basically shrieking nuisance. I can basically see into one person's back garden and the back of some houses. So oh, okay, yeah. So it's not, I don't... I don't it's yeah. a fairly rich biodome that you're exploring. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got... It's you, you start small and then you go yeah. out. Yeah. What is it they say? Just exploring they reckon, your niche. They reckon that if people did a proper survey of their garden, then they'd discover like two or three new varieties of insects or something, don't they? That's not what heard, they say. Not heard that one. Yeah, they reckon that because we don't, because some of them are really localized, they'd be considered sort of different subspecies and stuff. So but, that's what I heard. But, but for good or ill, Chris. Well, I think we, just, you know, when we just discover the these insects, we can't turn the clock back, can we? What if they turn it before we were married? <laughs> trying to take over the human race or something? I don't think insects can do that. Well, no, with their hive mind coming together, you don't know what they can do. Well, best, you are, best leave it alone, I would suggest. I think, I think this is the paranoid rant of a half arachnid, well, <laughs> to be honest. Uh, you seen... end up like me, maybe you'd be paranoid as well. Well... We'll never know, will we? Nature has consequences. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm the lesson to the world. <laughs> well, and it's a stark lesson, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Stark, stark movie lesson. lesson. Uh, I've seen starlings. Starlings, okay. They're nice, aren't they? They fly around in, like, big numbers and look like someone shaking out their blanket. Mm. Yeah. And do they, that's... Are they yeah. doing any singing or any starlings they sing, don't they? They do. They, yeah, they've done some tweeting. Bit of warbling, yeah. Bit of tweeting and that. And um, I think I saw a sparrow, but it could have been a fox. I don't know. Yeah, they are. They're very similar. Well, I don't. I don't know what a sparrow being, looks like. Being, being or as a they fox, four legged. <laughs> well, you don't, I don't know. Well, it's true. Dinosaurs had four. Have legs, you not so... got? Have you, have you not bought your bill of these big book of birds? I'm waiting for. I, I ordered on Amazon, but there's postal strikes. Uh, um, I've got an I Spy book of birds, so I can tick them off. Yeah. Uh, and get your Twitch, of, Twitter badge or whatever it's called, Twitcher badge. Excuse me. Yeah, now you have to pay for a Twitter. Yeah, badge. That's, yeah, that's, that's <laughs> a different thing. <laughs> and I've got um, Bill or D's big bombastic book of birds coming as well. So oh, that, that'll be good. That'll with keep a, that'll keep you busy. With a foreword by Chris Eubanks. So yeah, that'll nice. be nice, won't it? Good that good that Chris got in the the Lord's. Oh, good Lord, for him. He's got Lord. a lot of different hobbies, isn't he? He has Lord of Brighton, I think, is the title I, he bought. I, I, I'm, I'll go along with that, to be honest yeah, with you. I think, I think, yeah, whatever. I'm not Good. bothered. It's fine. Good for you. I like Chris. He's a colourful character. He is a colourful character, and he and he very firmly has his tongue in cheek. Yes, I think he uh, he knows. He's and a, a very good boxer. He was a very he certainly good boxer. was back in the day. Yeah. Yeah. Fortunately, I had a yeah, sort of bit of a tragic fight, but I don't want to get into that. It's a light-hearted podcast. Mm. So. Very light-hearted. Um, so Neil. So, yeah, that's enough what, of that bollocks. What, um, what are we um what are we gonna be looking at today? Is yeah. it is it something from a faraway land? From a faraway land, yes. Um so given the football's still on, not to say that we've been uh, sponsored and sold out or anything, Chris, but um we're gonna be doing uh Qatari folktale today. Oh, I'll tell you something about uh, Qatari Airlines. Mm. You get uh you get five star treatment for three star price. Yeah, I've heard, you know. Comfortable seats. And uh all you can eat mussels. <laughs> I believe that's just the main selling point. 
Well, it's, it's on the ocean, isn't it? So, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, so, I imagine, you know. Yeah, those um, lovely warm Indian Ocean mussels. <laughs> <laughs> Got to wait them within two minutes. I'm ignorant enough of that. May, may be true. Uh, yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you what, though. Um, people talk about the um, sort of draconian laws uh, against homosexuals in Qatar. But I'll tell you what, Neil. They've never actually enforced a death penalty for homosexuality in Qatar. So, you know, unlike places like Saudi Arabia. So, you know, think on. It's not Maybe it's not so bad. Uh, there you go. <laughs> oh, and I tell you what, Neil, the investment opportunities. Well, I'll tell you what, there's money to be making. There's money to be making. We're um, we're actually reinvesting our the the um, sponsorship money which we've got from an unknown uh, an, an unnamed sponsor uh, into Qatari Bitcoin, aren't we? Yes. Well, I mean, I feel like. You know, we're very much at the, the the market sort of gone down now, and it can only go up. So oh, it have to go up. Yeah, everything always goes up. It's almost like any it's classic merchant behaviour. You know, buy cheap, sell high. So you know, get in now. Get in now. Trust our advice. You know, on all financial yeah. matters. Get yeah, in Qatari. now. The going's good. Yeah, www. Qatari. Pump up that price when we can. Like, Qatari. Qatari. Coin. Dot org. Yeah. Just have a look. That's all we're saying. Just have a look, invest your life savings, and don't worry about the financial consequences. It'll be fine. No, um, we're like on FTX. Any, we're looking for you know, like with any whole situation out. Don't worry. Like about with it. any investments, your your money can go longer. up. It goes up and down. down. It goes up and down. That's it goes up market. and down. Yeah. You see, this is why the rich people are, are rich, isn't it? Because they're willing to stay in long term. They don't panic. Oh. They've got cool, they've got they've got ice in their veins. All I'm saying, Chris, is there's money to be making if you're prepared to take a bit of a risk. If you're not, the money's there. You want to pick it up. Good. If not, that's fine. Yeah. To leave it, leave it on the t- leave it on the table it's and go back to go yeah, back to shine price. my shoes. As, <laughs> as it's saying, Glen uh, Glen Ross. Go back to your go back to your grey terraced house yeah. with your with your stop complaining. In, your loveless you marriage. Had a chance. Yeah, you could. Yeah, what, sure. you, what your wife's going to look you in the eye? What's she going to love you? <laughs> what's she going to say? Yeah. Cowards. Yeah. I mean, yeah, sure. You could be like us and have uh, Instagram fitness models as partners, but you prefer not to. You, you know, you're risking that's fine. No, that's, that's fair what, enough. Look, it's you know, absolutely you, up to you. Hey, you know, it's all, all, all different sorts of the world. Yeah, we need you crazy know, cowards as well. There are. <laughs> there are. There are. There are. There are. There are, there are, there are, <laughs> there are sharks. And they're a sheep. Yeah. And, the, you know, if you're a sheep, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. You know, but don't complain when our sharks, you know, make a killing because of our, yeah. because of our, um, green back bloodlust. You want to be a dove? I'm going to be a hawk. That's the way it goes. <laughs> <laughs> you want to be a rabbit? I'm going to be an owl. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. I'm going to be so, a half man spider. Right. Anyway, if you want to be a half man spider, I'm going to be a half man house cat. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. The natural enemy of the half man half spider, because they're the only prey that cats can get indoors, and cats love a kill. They do. They do. Apparently, they do. and moths, moths and spiders, and anything that they can kill and just put in front of you. To be honest with yeah, you, yeah. Well, it's nice, isn't it? Getting a nice. They yeah, can't go nice. down. They can't go down yeah, bird like, on your doorstep. That's always. Yeah, but they can't go down to shops, can they? I could, I could do. If they, if they, well, they don't have any. If they truly they wanted to impress me, they could. Uh, you know, they could. But they could master my... both the concepts of currency and <laughs> and and being able to pick things up without an appraisable thumb. Well, they can pick stuff up in their mouth. That's not the problem. But it's where they get the money from. Cause, I mean, mm. I don't know if I'm unusual, but I don't give my I don't give my cats an allowance. Can't they earn it? Well, I mean, I, I, if they started earning it, yeah. then maybe I'd give it I'll to them. I'll tell you this. If you're the first cat to open that TikTok channel for their own, well, this is the thing, I an think... absolute fortune in sponsorship. Well, cats, cat videos... Yeah, are the, the money's most... there for them to pick it up, which is too fucking cat, lazy. Cat videos are the most popular videos on the internet. Yeah. So really, people are making money off a of cat, so cats should see some of that money. Yeah. Because they're, they're, the, um, they're the product, they're the content, so they should actually... Cats should actually probably be richer than humans with the amount of videos that people watch. I, do you know what? I, I'm pretty sure this has been a Peter campaign already. Already? I think there, <laughs> there was, um, 
what was it? There was uh, there was like a so there was a guy who set up like a, a wildlife photography, and they did it was like a a monkey did like a what they called a selfie. Oh yeah, yeah I and that. I'm pretty sure I'm this no, this this might be an urban myth of its own, but um, I vaguely recall seeing an article. This might this might be my misfiring synapses, so it's bollocks. I apologise, but um, spider maps. Somebody claiming that. Um, or, or there the were court case, or at least an allegation that because it was quote unquote a selfie, the mm. um, the monkey should own the copyright for the photo. So they tried mm. to sue on behalf of the or threatened to sue on behalf of the monkey or something like this. I can't remember the details. You you might have seen this picture. It's like a, it's like a yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, yeah. He's like grinning. Yeah. He's like got a big yeah, and there's smile one in the background as well, isn't yeah. there? Kind of having a look. Yeah, I've seen it. But it was actually set up by a sort of like, when I first saw it, I thought that my screen had turned into a mirror. Yes. <laughs> yeah, likewise. Although, although um, I realised that my my teeth are a bit too uh, too, too good, too, too good. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my skin was a bit better. Yeah. <laughs> I was, didn't have as much. I was air. Just having a good day that day. I was like, oh, <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh, first, do you know what? I was looking pretty shiny. <laughs> do you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Speed Hello. <laughs> Get out and about. <laughs> pretty good today. It was. It wasn't until you had chased back home with pitchforks yeah. that you realised. <laughs> and then, unfortunately, <laughs> came across a mirror. I tried to avoid my. Oh, we're really kind of like <laughs> this one now because there's not a lot to. I don't know. Like. What, I don't you know, know how what it is, yet, is. do you? Well, um, no, I don't. <laughs> right. So this is um, this is the legend of um, what is it? Homerat Algila. Homerat Algila. Yeah, it's actually known by many names. I mean, <laughs> I take, go by many names. <laughs> I'm taking this from a, a website called FolkloreThursday.com. Um, I'm not sure what the premise of the site is. Um, I assume they do new bits you of folklore every Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Like us, really. Yeah. Well, actually, that's oh, sis, sis, sister side. Hey, this could be like our... Let's have a look. It's um, a writer in, interested in how we... A writer interested in how we tell and experience stories. Working on a screenplay of local folk tales. Yep, he has right. a website on Twitter. So, uh, Sounds I'm like a guy. Fucker. So, uh, yeah, if you... Yeah, FolklorePhursday.com if you fancy giving it a look. Um, little website here. Um, but yeah, this is about... Uh, so I'm not going to read the whole article. I'm a bit, I'll be honest, I'm a bit nervous about the screenplay bit. <laughs> well, funny enough, this, this urban legend has been turned into a film, but I don't think it's the, oh. the same chap. Um, but oh, he's like, no, they got there first. We'll get, we'll get into that in a minute. But he's, the, the, the article itself is about stories from the Arabian Gulf, so it's a bunch of different ones, but we'll just... Um, we don't do multiple on here, so we'll do... Uh... Just because I have an open shortcut for four years, how did they get there before me? <laughs> I mean, that's the problem, isn't it? Urban urban legends are in the public domain. Mm-hmm. I think I was reading somewhere, so we'll try and actually get to the point at some point. Um, apparently, yeah. the Sherlock Holmes become... Um, stories oh, all no. become public domain fairly soon. I think they already oh, are in the UK, but um, yeah. in the US as well, they become public domain in the next year or two. Oh, God. So wait for a slew of terrible, terrible... Um, Sherlock Holmes style. Stuff, stuff. As yeah. if we don't have enough, but yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, well, I mean, it, 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 to be fair, you don't have to watch it. No, that's true. The only... So the old Basil Rathbone ones, the proper old films, are quite good because they're, they're funny and old Jeremy fashion. Jeremy Brent are the best ones for me. Jeremy Brent ones, which you can see on YouTube, yeah, they're, they're yeah. really good. They were on ITV back in the eighties. Yeah. They're brilliant. Yeah, they were really good. And the only kind of modern one which I didn't mind was Elementary, which is Johnny Lee Miller. Yeah, I've not seen it. I didn't. I didn't actually mind the Cumberbatch one. It just disappeared up his eyes incredibly it. quickly. Um, yeah, I hated it. No, I liked it for about two series. And then it That's just, all right. We don't have to like the same things now. I know we don't. I'm just explaining that I, you know, I'm not saying you're wrong in what you're saying. I'm just explaining that I take that. I'm wrong. right. <laughs> well, yeah, no. I, you know, the list no, was thinking, enough, yeah. well, that was what Chris thought. But as we know, his taste is notoriously wrong. So let's check in with Neil and see what he thinks so we can understand whether we should like it or not. That's what they're thinking, okay. Chris. That is what now, now they know what they should think. Okay. And that you were that's wrong. Good. And that's, you know, I didn't want to state that out, but there you go. Thought you well, forced me into that. Yeah, I thought it was best that the listeners got a, a peek behind the curtain of what you really like. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> I think they've probably picked up on it by now. Yeah, I would have hoped so. Yeah. Right. So. 
So, a couple of centuries ago, Qatar's capital Doha was one of many seafront settlements on the eastern coast of the peninsula. Its neighbouring settlement, al was so close in proximity that British historians often confuse the two. Well before oil and gas were discovered, Doha and its neighbours lived on pearl diving and were known mm-hmm. for being trade routes between the British Empire and India. Mm-hmm. Much to the dismay of the Ottoman Empire, but that's a topic for another time. So we go back into the, the past here, Chris. Yeah, back you know, into the annals of time. Any oil and whatnot was discovered. So it's yeah, mainly a sort of maritime nation, you know, surviving on pearl diving. Yeah. And we um, we bring ourselves to the tale of the, as I say, the Homerat al Gaila. Again, always um, close to the pronunciations, or Um Homar. So Homerat al Gaila, which is a translation literally of. Um, Female donkey of noontime. <laughs> Great name, that. The lady donkey of noontime. Or simply Unhamar, which just means donkey lady. So we're just going to go with donkey lady from now on. Oh, let's go donkey lady, yep. If you, you know, if you want to be formal, you can say donkey lady at noontime. But, uh, mm. So this is a story of a half woman, half donkey creature, <laughs> who seeks out and eats kids. Oh. So there you go, that's not bad, is it? That's pretty good. <laughs> The donkey's notoriously cover, uh, carnivorous. Yeah, I kind of... They don't... I mean... They're, they're te- they're, they've got kind of like... Um, they don't have carnivorous they just teeth, teeth, do they? They just eat apples out of your hand, don't they, donkeys? Yeah, or some sort of, you know... Uh, I don't know. Isn't a donkey... Donkeys are impotent, aren't they? No. Because oh. it's when... It, it's when a mule and a horse no, it's have mule, sex. No, a mule, a mule is a half donkey, half horse. Oh, okay. Is it? Yes. Is it a mule okay. or an ass? I forget. But anyway, or is it the same thing? I think I think it's a mule. So donkey, donkeys are a breed. Horses are a breed. If you breed a horse and a donkey, it'll, it'll give viable offspring. But that, well, yeah. viable to the extent that it can't actually, um, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like humans and like spiders. It. Yes. Very similar. Yeah. So parents, typically mothers, apparently, warn uh-huh. their children from venturing outside the house when the sun is high, because that's the creature's time to lurk in neighbourhoods. So this is uh-huh. quite an interesting one. Yeah, it's, a, it's like midday, exactly, right? it's midnight, it's time midday. So I'm, you know, I wonder if that's anything to do with the fact that it gets about forty-five, fifty degrees Celsius at midday, so it's quite a dangerous time to be out. Well, yeah, this is the thing because I mean. <laughs> Yeah, presumably it's kind of, um, yeah, you, you don't want to be knocking about when it's at the height of, uh, there's only mad dogs and Englishmen that brave the heat in the midday sun, isn't it? Apparently. Did you come up with that? No, that was Noel Coward, I believe. Okay. Never heard that one before? I have, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so wearing all black, her telltale sign is the sound of her hooves. That send kids oh. fleeing in fright. So what this doesn't actually kind of like say is which, you know, what she looks like. Yeah, is she like a cent? Is she like a centaur or like bottom from Midsummer Night's Dream? So I'm picturing kind of like, like a woman sort of like from the waist up, and then kind of like just two sort Horse of legs. Talking, yeah, like the, like the devil. Because we'll get into the 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 movie in a minute. There's um there's a there's a movie they've made out of this this um. Bit of mythology, or to say they. There's, um, we'll get into the sort of film, of some brainy filmmakers who, who made it. Um, uh, but yeah, it, and then I, I watched the, uh, the, the trailer on YouTube and yeah, it seemed, that seemed to be the, the case, but it's, I couldn't, I've looked around various other articles and it doesn't actually say, um, yeah, but let's, yeah, so anyway, let's go with that. It's, um, it's not kind of like, I don't know, going around on all fours with like a lady's head up and out or something. Yeah, or a lady, just just a lady's torso and a donkey's head. Oh yeah, that'd be freaky, wouldn't it? Be like, what was that bottom from that? Mm. It's a nice dream. It's a nice dream. Thank you. Yeah. So wearing all black, a telltale sign is a sign of a who's that sends kids fleeing in fright. So yeah, I think it's got a human shape, but with donkey feet. One assumes. Um, no one knows her true origins, but the cunning and deceitful donkey lady. Is known oh. for knocking on doors when parents are taking their noon nap after a long morning's work. Ah, uh, so it's siesta time. Yeah, so I mean, you, you're going to have to do that, aren't you, when you're out there so much so hot? So you've probably been out, you know, get up nice and early, go out and do a bit yeah, of pearl get up diving. As soon as, yeah, as soon as it's light, you know, get out before it gets too hot, do a bit of pearl diving, get some sand. Yeah, 
get back get back in before it gets too hot. A bit of a kit. Have a sleep for a few hours. Well deserved yeah. kit. That's what you're gonna do, isn't it? Yep. Yeah, get back out of the evening perhaps, try and do a bit more pill done before it gets too dark. Um Well they do that everywhere where it's hot, don't they? Have a, yeah, I mean, can, we, yeah, I mean, have a, have a sleep during the day. It's, uh, it's like in Spain. Mm, so yeah, so, um, yeah. They, uh, it's really funny because, in, because in Spain, the younger people, like, they'll, like, go out at, like, they'll go out sort of dancing or whatever till, like, four, five, six in the morning. Mm. And I asked the Spanish guy, I was said, you know, and, and then, you know, then they get up after, like, three hours sleep and then go to work. Uh, and then they go back and have a sleep midday, and then they work till like come back at like three and work till seven. And I suppose I like you know like how do how do people do it? Like how do they yeah. kind of have that little sleep and then get up? And he said, "Have you ever tried to get anything done in a bank in the morning shifts? Like it's just, <laughs> there's absolutely no point. You, you always always just leave all of your business until after lunch because you know they're going to be of absolute no like the people who work are of no use Thanks if they're young." <laughs> yeah, I mean, but it's weird because I don't. The first time when I was younger, when I went out to Barcelona for the first time, and it feels very natural to be up at like two o'clock in the morning. Because like if you were out, like when I was like a kid, and you'd, you'd go clubbing and stuff, and you might be up to two or three o'clock in the morning, but you start yeah. to get tired unless you, you know, had some kind of uh, <laughs> stimulation. stimulation that uh, means that you, you can't quite get tired. And then you're going to pay for it afterwards. But no, we got. I mean, you know, we'd had a few drinks and stuff. But you know, then have a very late meal. But you, 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 you stay out and like, and then you're kind of like, oh blimey, it's two o'clock in the morning. You, you, it doesn't sort of feel like it. Do you know what I mean? No, because the streets are still busy and it's, it's still, and it's still really, quite warm. And it's, it's busy and it's warm yeah. and stuff's open. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah. just a different, it's it's a different, different vibe. Way of, yeah, different way of living, isn't it? It's good. I mean, it's good for sort of holidays and stuff because yeah, you can sort of like have those. And as you say, it's kind of yeah, then sort of. You have a bit of a kid. Oh, I can't. I'm, I'm not very good at sleeping during the day, so I can't siesta. So I end up yeah. just like staying up till two and then getting up at like ten or eleven the next morning yeah. and going and doing stuff. Yeah, my body, my internal clocks, not my circadian rhythm, rhythm or whatever yeah. it's called, isn't isn't based on that kind of living. No, we're Northern European, so that's uh, yeah, where it's uh, yeah. Well, at the moment, work, it work, feels work, like the sun's sleep, out for sleep, about work, two work, hours work, in the day. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Yeah, right. um, but now I quite like that kind of uh, that lifestyle. Oh, yeah, die. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I can imagine it'd be very similar um, out in the yeah. world. Um, Do you know what's annoyed me about this World Cup is uh, how many people incorrectly call teams from North Africa teams from the Middle East. They're going, oh, you know, teams from Morocco, you well, know, like the Middle East. Morocco, yeah. Like, yeah, and they're going, you know, teams from the Middle East, like, are really good. And, like, they're really enjoying this World Cup. And you're like, they're not from the Middle East, they're from North Africa. Yeah, well, they're in all the African Cup of Nations, aren't they? It's, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's like people don't understand what the Middle East is, which is, like, Syria down, then Gulf of mm. Arabia, and then pretty much over to Iran. And then that that's the Middle East. Like, there's, like, ten countries there. But it's not. Egypt is a Middle East. It's Africa. Yeah, yeah, it's part of Africa, yeah. Yeah, it's just annoyed me how many people get that wrong. Stop getting geography wrong! Well, they get, it's like you're talking about Muslim countries, right? From, you know, fine. But like, all Muslim countries aren't Middle East. Yeah, well, I mean, the whole kind of like... Indonesia isn't Middle East. But yeah, I mean, but I mean, the whole notion of kind of like East and West is a bit sort of artificial, isn't it? And it's it's kind of like, um, you know, based on wherever you're wherever you're coming from in that part of the world, because I think as well, like Africa is a really abused term, and I think you know a lot of people they, they mean sub-Saharan Africa when they yes, they do. They mean about black it. people Africa. That's what yeah. I mean. Yeah. But or, or you but, get like you know, what am I going on about? Oh, I love Africa. I could talk about it all day, and it's like what? It's like, it's like yeah, saying what, what, I love countries? this continent. Yeah, exactly. It's all... Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Weird. There you go. There you go. And if we're Ignorant as we are, I don't think that one. There you go. Um, but yeah, yeah. So, right. Sorry, I've just got to clamber off my high horse here, Chris. Get back Have to you? the article. No. Get on a higher horse. No, I've got to clamber off of my high horse. Onto an, onto an even higher one. Yeah. Gonna ride your high so horse up onto an massive horse. Well, being half spider, aren't you know, fun. Yeah, it's easy. Spanious, is there? Well, spiders are known for their sanctimoniousness, yeah. aren't they? Exactly. That's why. In, that's why Spider-Man is. It's not just the quipping; it's all of that kind of like self-righteousness as well. 
Yeah, and that's why I always sit in the corner of the room judging you. Yeah. Bastards. <laughs> You're not better than me. Partly, yeah, the Marvel movies didn't get quite correct. Um, well, got to uh, water it down for, yeah. for the general public. When he addressed uh, the Oxford Union, they didn't show that when the film, did they? No, they didn't. <laughs> when he did that TED talk. Some weird things to say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Very old-fashioned views. Right. All I'm saying is colonialism wasn't all bad. <laughs> Why can't we teach homeless people to fish and then feed themselves? Surely that's better than handouts. <laughs> <laughs> and these are real things that Tory councillors have said. Anyway, um, well, that was, that was, I think that was Tory, but I used to live around where I was, um, this uni in London. Um, what did we get up to? So we, yeah, so. She knocks on the doors when they're having a siesta. Yes. Yeah, so we don't know her. Yeah, she's knocking on the doors after they've done it and that from one of work. So I think, you know, this, um, this is all the, all the hallmarks at the moment of kind of like it's funny enough with some of the German stories that we're doing about sort of you know you wonder child, if this is a ch- child control yeah yeah he's, you get into that so you know let's scare the kids so they don't try and go out in the meantime so she approaches homes and cries out to kids for their help begging for oh. food or water oh. if they do as they are told and do not open the door to strangers Unhamar begins to bang on it instilling fear into their hearts. Mm. In some versions of the story, she turns into a lizard that is then able to climb onto the wall <laughs> of the other side, or is accompanied by three black dogs. <laughs> black dogs. People hate black dogs. It's like black cats. Yeah, well, I suppose it's kind of like... Um, difficult to see at night. Yeah, well, difficult to see at night, that's fair enough. Let me see what's... Yeah, I don't know what, what that's... No, about. I don't know. I've got two black cats, so I'm not quite into all of that. Yeah, like, but they're um, they're the lot, they're the ones that are the most difficult to home from pet sanctuaries. Is that so? Because black cats, yeah, yeah, because people are stupid and superstitious. Yeah, they think they're the devil or something, but it's kind of yeah. <laughs> well, I think they're unlucky, don't they? Oh, I was that. Yeah, I mean, I I, I do blame my, the breakup of my marriage on my two cats. <laughs> Not, not at all. The incompatibility of the two parties involved. No, better, better, better to more well, learning lessons when you just can, uh, you know, uh, yield to superstition. Yeah, I mean, exactly. it, it might have been. It may be that the uh, the donkey lady was involved as well, Chris. You don't know. Yeah, Robert the doll, maybe. You know, <laughs> she might have like wanted all, the, you know, all of this, you know, shenanigans going on with the uh, with the World Cup. She might have decided to come over to the UK. Yeah. She knew yeah. that Brighton's a very accepting place and people wouldn't look at her twice just for having donkey legs. Hey, well, donkey legs, that's fine. Just crack it up. Yeah, whatever. Yeah. Don't matter. Above me. But being kids, you know. though, yeah, that's not cool. Yeah, try not to eat kids, but yeah. apart from that, you know, we welcome you with open arms. Yeah. You know what? We've got a green MP, you know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I voted for Caroline Lucas. <laughs> Ain't I special? You've got the only Green MP in the whole of the UK. The bleeding edge of liberalism, Brighton. Well, you, you know, I think everyone was sort of bang on about how the Greens are all loonies and all the rest of it, but the um, biggest problem that we've got, apart from, uh, you know, the donkey ladies trying to take over, is uh, you know, yeah. the climate climate issues and what have you. Yeah. Climate issue. Got don- donkey ladies. Yeah. Time. I mean, obviously, got, got to sort out donkey lady first. Yeah. Then, then do maybe that. think like, about doing get, something d- about climate. Or just well, maybe off, just, you know, use coal for another 50 years and see what happens. Yeah, why yeah. not? Well, like I said, you know, people kind of, you know, the permafrost in Siberia will all go away, so we can just move yeah, there. that'd be fine, yeah. Just move somewhere There's else. plenty of world. Green night... Like, Greenland will be a become much a more beautiful, pleasant, yeah. pleasant land. Maybe live on, you know, uh, there's underneath the Antarctica. There's plenty of land. It swings around a bit, you know. Chris, you know. It will mean some changes, but to be honest, I'm a bit bored of this world. Let's etch a sketch. The yeah, one is, let's start with a blank page. You know, exactly. I mean, because I think a lot of people are very selfish. Because you think, I mean, the um, the Icelandic wine industry, you know, it, <laughs> it's dying on its feet. 
<laughs> you yeah. want to you know, deny it's them a... the opportunity to be able to make their own Chablis, whatever, you know. Yeah, and you want a return on your investment, yeah, exactly. don't you? Because you've put a lot, you've put put a lot, lot of money, money into, into Iceland. <laughs> put a lot of my, <laughs> my, my wine industry. My cryptocurrency into that, <laughs> launching that. No, no, you can't, yeah. you know, gotta, gotta keep, you gotta keep it all cut. Yeah. And when am I going to start seeing some money back on those, uh, orange groves from in Finland yeah. that I've, uh, that I've put so much cash into? Well, not anytime soon if the loony left keeps temperatures dangerously <laughs> below five degrees C. <laughs> More. <laughs> no, think on, you know, there's different mm. consequences for different people. Maybe stop thinking about yourself. Yeah, and you know, just because well, maybe, maybe I wouldn't I want am... my entire continent to be underwater. Well, you know, again, <laughs> swings around about. Yeah, you know, I don't really consider it my concern. I'm a, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a human of the world. Yeah. Don't matter to me where I live. What matters to me is getting some return on investment. <laughs> but just but don't don't have a go at me and Neil just because we have absolutely uh, no belief that people are going to turn around the climate crisis in time because of too many vested interests by companies run by sociopaths and we've started investing in in some quite some people would call uh wacky uh <laughs> wacky ideas in some of the more northern climes or some, you know some some ethically questionable decisions yeah. yeah the hudson the hudson bay beach holiday resort that i've been uh that i've been <laughs> banding around if i've learned anything that's that's the way you make money chris you know mm-hmm. morals are just a way to uh you know restrict your bank balance yeah, 100%. I'll tell you what's nice, though, Neil. Qatari wine. I've been having some of that recently. Ooh. It's a bit more expensive, but I'll tell you what, it'll give France a run for its money. Qatar. So, Black Dogs. Black Dogs. So, I mean, that's kind of pretty much the tale of the, the donkey lady, to be honest oh. with you. Um, it, it's, it very much seems to be so... It's, well, I've just we're going on a bit a little bit more. So the, the tale illustrates the difficulties of desert life for our ancestors, and mm-hmm. we can also find lessons typical of folk tales that elders pass on to their kids. Above all else, one lesson in particular stands out, and that's the uncertainty of life and how quickly one's fate can change. To survive is to stick the familiar, to the familiarity of tribe and routine, and to steer clear of the unknown in either people or activity. He sounds like a sheep, not a shark. Well, I don't, you know, I don't think, don't think he's going to have any sort of like great ideas about how we can, you know, found new, beautiful wine. Yeah, I won't be uh, going to him for investments in my uh, Norwegian mango forest. Sometimes you've got to get out in the noon and and build a stadium. Yeah. Or, you know, an air-conditioned stadium. Keep the passports. Yes. I don't know that one. It's not, not, uh, yeah. It's not good. Yeah. So these, these are all kind of like, um, let's have a look. Actually. So yeah, the tales have been, um, so the rest of this, this is just around sort of like saying it's, it's an oral based history. The t- tales have been passed down from one generation to another. Um, but there have been some stories documented attempts at retelling the stories from modern audiences. For example, in one remake, um, Umhamar hitchhikes on a highway and gets into a car with teens too young to be driving. Oh, dear. Doesn't say what actually happens there, but... Too female to be driving. (laughs) It could be that as well. (laughs) So there's there's also... So so that's kind of like the the basic myth, but this is also something where it's become a a motion picture now, Chris. Well, I say that. It's a a short... motion picture. So... Uh, A talkie? It is a talkie. It's called Cloven, based on the Bahraini folktale. And it's okay. got an international recognition. It was at Screamfest, a, a horror film festival. Okay. Is that well known? Apparently. Well. With a name yeah. like that. It's, it's in the top 50 horror film festivals. Horror film being in, such in, the UA, well in, the, in the UAE. <laughs> I saw the YouTube, um, on YouTube, there was a, a, a what do you call that, a trailer. Um, it looks quite well filmed, to be fair. So a short horror film from the tiny archipelago of Bahrain was screened at the 2018 Scream, Fe- Scream Fest Film Festival in Los Angeles. Yes, it's a Scream Fest Horror Film Festival. It's a horror film festival founded by film producers Rachel Belowski and Ross Martin in August 2001. It runs over 10 days during the month of October and is hosted at the TCL Chinese Six Theatre in Los Angeles, California. Oh, there you go. Um, it's the largest and longest running horror film festival. Off the top of my head. In the US. Longest running, yeah. 
21 years premiered old. premiered some of the most successful films in the horror genre, including Paranormal Activity and The Grudge. Oh, those are both mm. quite bad. Not seen either of them. Yeah. I don't like horror films, though, do I? Because <laughs> I'm of a delicate no, disposition. Don't yeah, you. Oh. I don't want to. I live on my own. I'll have mm-hmm. nightmares. Uh, where's my teddy bear? <laughs> and blankie. Where's my blankie? Oh. Oh, oh, I'm going to have a hot milk with honey and try to you get some sleep. Doctor Who, it's not too scary. Just scary, man. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, the, the film Clove, and it was produced, directed, and acted entirely by Barony Clarston crew. Um, horror story based on the folk tale of the donkey lady. And then... Interesting that they managed to get, or I guess, um, based on what you've told us, a short's probably about as much as you can get yeah, out of it. Yeah, it's kind of like 12 minutes long, I think. And it seems like... <laughs> this is what I'm saying. And it, the the thing is that basically a guy... Bang, bang, bang. A, Children at the door. Eats the kids. The end. Well, no, it, and the trailer it literally was. So <laughs> the chap sort of goes and picks up this lady on the road, and then he's like, oh, what are you sort of doing out at night? And then it's sort of... The, the strings weigh up, and then they just show the back of the car, and it's like... And then you sort of like can't quite see, but I, I don't know whether she turns into a donkey or whatever to eat him, but it turns into sort of shape <laughs> to attack this creature in the car. And then you, one, one assumes that he's been sort of like murdered. Um, I mean, it actually looked quite, quite good production values. It's not sort of, yeah, it's not like kind of like a robo vampire or whatever, one of those kind of like really, yeah, yeah. trauma or trauma, or tra- yeah, trauma studios or whatever they're called. Um, mm-hmm. Funnily enough, this repeats a lot of the the, um, the words from the other the other site. So, obviously, <laughs> not no one knows the true origins, but the cunning and deceitful donkey ladies known for knocking on doors and parents are taking their noon nap after a long morning's work. Yada yada yada, which we, we already got from the other site. Um, oh, hello, no, Mohammed Fakro. I think it is the same chap. No, there we Let's go. Have a look. Do you think he's just made this up? <laughs> yeah, I think I've just been there. Uh, I've just, just been catfished. Con- I've been misguided. <laughs> <I've> got <horror laughs> catfished. What donkey lady murdering people? Why are you fucking idiot? <laughs> That's not part of our. I mean, to be fair, I did go fishing in uh, Reddit, um, so I got, I got what I got what I paid for. What's that? We always said that we'd avoid Reddit until until well, no, I was trying, I was trying to avoid just Reddit based. Um, Stories. stories. So, in theory, I think this is a. I'm, I'm going to go with that. This is a, a real kind of like. Um, yeah. Tell yeah, yourself. I'm that. telling myself that. Should we go through our scoring system, Neil? We. Or is there still more? Let's go? just let's just see. Let's just see. See if there's anything else about this film because you know, tell us a little bit. Well, no, because it, it no because anyway, it did get it did get on the screen first. Um, and hey, you know, even if it did make it up, I admire admire their mocks. It's a bit like um, what was that film called? The Came out in the nineties. Blow Witch Project. They came. Yeah, where they made the website. Yeah, they came up with a whole kind of like um, mythology around that. It was very, very clever. Yeah. So good luck to him if he has tricked me. Um, because yeah, I can't really see. And if he can trick you, nearly he can oh, trick yeah, anyone. I mean, with the thorough research and cross um, examination and due diligence and cross referencing I've done, you know, yeah. you know, you know, you know this, yeah, you know the weeks the... of work I put into these, Chris. Oh, absolutely. And with the, the intelligence of a human, a human and the guile of a yeah. spider, then, you know... N- not many not, slip through my web. N- not many. <laughs> there's no flies on you, them. unless you're eating them. Oh, yeah. Well, it's good protein, isn't it? That's good, right. Good free protein. protein. Run out of peanuts. Yeah, not so, much more to say about that. They made a film out of it. They look, yeah. Probably worth a watch if you okay, get a chance. It's only 12 minutes, isn't it? What are you going to do? So they're scratching your ass for 12 minutes, not to watch a film, eh? Sounds yeah. all right. Um, so, Neil, let's go through yes, our scoring system. So, spookiness, what are you thinking, you crazy spidey bastard? Um, it's in- yeah, it's interesting, this, actually, because it's, it's so kind of alien to, you know, I'm thinking this, you know, spookiness, everything happening at night and things like that. But, mm. yeah, there's something, I mean... Uh, I mean, eating kids, that's always something that's going to get you up on the spooky, um, spooky uh, spectrum, isn't it? It's not, it's not great. Um, half lady, half donkey, though, that's kind of a bit, a bit <laughs> comical. Um, 
could have chosen a more fearsome yeah, I mean, animal. Like it would be like a hyena or lady or something like that. You'd, I mean, I've yeah. known, again, I'm going to be showing my ignorance here because I say, well, actually, no, that's, you know, in, in Africa, that's not in, um, in the, you know, kind of like Bahrain or whatever. Arabian yeah, so you, I, I, I'm not sure what those kind of like local flora and fauna are, but, um, yeah, so, you know, maybe there's not that many options to pick from, but it's not, it's kind of like a crap werewolf. Scorpion? See, well, yeah, see, scorpion would be good. Imagine it can, you know, you know, come out and then sting you with its tail. That'd be, you know, yep. that'd be, that'd be something. He would, something. he would just, you know, he would just taking it across the river and it said, well, I won't sting you because I drowned myself. And it did. And it went, well, it's my nature. And it's, it's like a bad metaphor for how people can't escape their truth. Yeah, people can't yeah. change. Lefts don't change the yeah. spots. Well, I can't coming out with irrelevant bollocks in the middle of when I'm supposed to be doing school. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Very much I've, you, I've, the I've, listener, I've... are the frog that is being stung and is drowning in, in all this <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> but, but you did let me climb aboard your back and whisper this nonsense into your ear and, in the sense that it was going to be in any way relevant or concise. <laughs> we both knew what was going to happen. Right. Not spinning it out until ten past, Chris. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. Um, yes, to some of what they're doing, but it's too. It's, I think the setup's just a bit too inherently ridiculous. And um, although I do quite like the twist on the fact that it's in the middle of noon, but that's not that doesn't make it spooky. So three out of ten for me on this one. Three out of ten. Um, yeah. So I guess the thing with it being at midday is in. That part of the world, that's actually when the streets would be yeah. empty. Whereas at night, they might be having a fire and a and a, a, a yeah. hooker and a sing song and stuff. So that would actually be the quiet time. So I guess that there would be kind of and with the hot sun beating down, like it's quite yeah, stark. Yeah. So it could be quite spooky if suddenly something, you know, like when it's the quiet time, there's something unusual when everyone's meant to be asleep happens. So it's almost kind of like night time, but without the night, if you get them drift. Um, the creature itself, yeah, the donkey thing. It's not too scary having donkey legs, really. I mean, unless you stood behind it and it kicked you in the forehead, you should never stand behind a horse or a donkey. I'll tell you that right now. Well, being um, human, we don't know what they might be able to do with their legs. Might be able to kick you from the front. Well, exactly. Well, no, because their knees don't bend that way, do they? Unless well, they do, don't. unless they've got do human knees, which just instantly shatter when they kick. <laughs> <It's murder laughs> ah. like yeah. Um, yeah, but good the at kind football, of though, it would be. Yeah, it'd be very good at football. Um, but what would be? They could have used a few donkey people, couldn't they? The Qatari team. Um, what? What? I think the kind of like your parents are sleeping, everything you're there, and then suddenly you're hearing like, "Ah, oh, help me! I need yeah, water. That's quite I need food." And then here, bang, 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 bang on the door. I think that's quite spooky. So I'm going to give it a little bit higher. I'm going to give it a five for spooky. Yeah, it is. So believability. Um, so I think that kids probably believed it because their parents told them. Uh, I'm sure their parents probably didn't believe it, but it's a good way to stop kids going out and getting dehydrated and dying in the fucking yeah. desert. Um, you know, do I think the creature exists? I don't. Um, it's another one. It's, it's another one to, it, it's, it's another one to stop kids doing stupid stuff. And there's loads of them, like, you know, at least 75% <laughs> of the stuff we look at. So. Um, but I'm sure kids probably believed it. Um, so I'm going to give it a four nil. Yeah, I think it's probably a similar score for similar logic for me. So as you say, I think this is more of a cautionary tale that they would have had to, you know, as you say, try and get kids to burn it. And it's really interesting, actually, the fact that, you know, um, you, you aren't sort of letting people in. You'd have to, I guess, you know, uh, it'd be different now, I suspect, because obviously you'd sort of, people would look it after. Because you live in a high skyscraper. Well, no, yeah, but also you kind of like, you know, looking after neighbours and things. But, you know, you know, if you're looking back, like how many thousands of years ago? Well, <clears throat> you've got to remember as well that before modernisation, there was fuckloads of nomadic bandits yeah. in Arabia as well. So you wouldn't want to be just letting people in willy nilly. Yeah, presumably, because um, you would have thought if somebody was banging my door, you try to give them water or something. But uh, obviously, that was um, was not the advised approach. So yeah, it's quite interesting. Um, I don't know where I was going with this. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. So it was to um, I remember what the 
Okay, yes. Anyway, so, um, but yeah, that's quite interesting. So, but yeah, I think so, although the, the parents probably didn't, um, didn't believe it, as you say, the kids probably did. Um, so it's, you know, it's there, they're sort of teaching them a moral lesson. Um, so yeah, I'll give it a, I'll give it a four as well. Okay, uh, Neil, <clears throat> narrative slash premise. Yeah, I, I think there's a little, <laughs> well, 12 minutes, I was going to say they made a film out of it, but it was pretty much a short. I think it's interesting, though. I think there's something you could dive into a little bit with this, because I think it'd be quite interesting to explore, you know, things from a, that different angle. Like I quite find it quite interesting, the, um, you know, looking at the, the, the noontime things and stuff like that. It'd be quite an interesting challenge to try and make a, a horror movie. Like a Western. Yeah, because funnily enough, actually, the, um, the the movie, the trailer, it all takes place at night. But, yeah. Oh, really? So mm. I, th- but I think it'd be yeah, be a really interesting challenge. To- no, exactly. Trick. It'd be really interesting challenge to try and do something at sort of noontime. So yeah, and you know what's why why half donkey? What happens? You know, like like me, there's a half spider. Mm. You know, well, we don't well, know. We, don't we know. just we don't know. We don't. We, we may, may never, never know. know. Yeah, and it's you know, government experiment gone wrong. You know, the will of will of God. Terrifying Adam military experiment. Spider. Aliens. Yeah. Living on a vortex or well, a yet we, you know, we, there's there's plenty of potential there to sort of dive into the uncanny valley. But uh, yeah, so I, I think. But having said that, it's so I think it's I think it's quite interesting to, for me at least because I think there's a lot to explore um, culturally. But um, you know, it's a little bit thin, so I'm going to go middle on give it a five. Okay, um, yeah. So I think the midday thing is a nice different take because daytime like daytime when every like it, when it's kind of stark and it's the hot sun and everything's kind of really white and you know you could it almost kind of affects your vision and stuff anyway when it's that when it's like that and the place just being completely shut down and there's no one on the street and stuff and it's kind of a, a, a small town that could you can make that scary you don't have to set it at night you can make that because the main sort of a main trope of horror stuff is um, you're you're alone against something horrible, and you could and you can do that with this. Um, the, it's original that it's half yeah, donkey. Is that? <laughs> that's that's original too. Um, but apart from that, it hasn't got a lot of hasn't got a lot of tricks up its sleeve or anything. I don't think it's I don't think it's amazing. I think you can do some stuff with it. But I'm going to give it a four. So reach. Um, well. It's reached Los Angeles, California, IA, uh, where presumably the Red Hot Chili Peppers saw it. Um, so I think it's it's either very local or this bloke's made it up himself. Yes. <laughs> so I don't think the reach is massive, and the the you know the UAE states are very small. You know they're, they're tiny. Um, I don't know how region. I don't think it's very regional. Like as in you wouldn't hear about it in Yemen or Saudi Arabia or whatever. Um, so I think it's got quite a small reach, to be honest. So I'm going to give it. Uh, although with the film picks up a point for that, so I'm going to give it a three nil. Yeah, similar for me, but probably just ever slightly lower because you know the, the, the film. But it was by the same person who wrote it. There's not a lot of web presence on this to the extent where I started questioning whether or not. I, th- I think it is a genuine. Um, a genuine thing, but it's it's just possible that a person has sort of made it up to make a film out of it. But no, I think I think it is a genuine sort of urban myth. Um but yeah, it's very restricted to a, quite a small part of the world. So not a lot of reach, but obviously they've kind of but that's what makes it interesting as well. You know, that's what gives it yeah, yeah exactly. what gives it a, a bit more flavour, but it doesn't doesn't have a most other podcasts wouldn't bother of bother looking at this, wouldn't they? they? Just probably correct yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> They're all about Bigfoot, aren't they? The big ticket items. Do another episode on Bigfoot. Bored of it. Um, Yeah, but anyway, we 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 uh, we foolishly tread in where angels fear or something. I don't know. (laughs) Again, doing a lot of that today. Um, Yeah, no, uh, there's there's very little in the way of reach really on this one. So, but an interesting one. But a bit of two for reach for me. So that gives us a 30 overall, uh, being legend scores. So not, not the lowest we've had by any means, but, um, but you know, it's okay. It's a, you know, a little bit um, different. You, you try something a little bit different. Try a little bit different. And it's very topical, yes. isn't it? 
with it being the World Cup there, although it might have finished by the time this goes out. Um, so, uh, if I mean, if you know anything about this or anything else, to, then yeah. you can get in contact with us at ERB, which is UAB, dot pod, dot legends, dot podcast at gmail.com. Um, but apart from that, um, we will see you uh, same time next week. And, uh, yeah, I hope you have a nice one. And, um, just, uh, just so you know, uh, this one will is, is just before Christmas. So you might be wondering what isn't a Christmas special. Uh, starting Christmas day, we have a 12 part mini series, um, with slightly shorter kind of half an hour length episodes doing the 12 legends of Christmas where we look at different Christmas legends from across, across the planet. I would argue um, that they and should be. Yeah, some would argue that. And uh, so they will go through to the 5th of January, the 12 days of Christmas. Until so, Epiphany, um, Chris. Yeah, give, until until Epiphany. Wise stops, men bearing stops just before Epiphany. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, keep your eye out for that. They'll be going out every day, um, as well as our normal stuff. So, uh, yeah, have a good have a good Christmas or whatever, or holiday period, whatever, whatever stuff you celebrate or don't celebrate you're just happy that there are less people coming into your shop like whatever i hope you have a nice time and uh yeah we'll be back with another one of these next thursday but uh on christmas day then the little mini extra fun starts extra no matter whether you like that or not it's uh yeah a little a few extra presents for you doesn't matter if you like it or not it's still happening happening. you can't can't, can't can't avoid it you can't do anything about it so just you know can't do anything brace about yourself. it. You get, in, get, in, get in the brace Ign- position in your seat. Just, yep, ignore yeah. it if you if you if you need to. But it Wait, will the, be the plane is going so, down. We're going to hit the ocean. Just... This is your fate is not your own yeah. at this point. So have a nice time, and we'll see no, you soon. Well. Goodbye. <laughs> Wi-Fi. Get that good. Really good.